Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing on this beautiful, beautiful, cool morning? One of, I think, our last mornings. I think it was 48, 49 when we woke up. And I think the high today will be 77. From here on out, I think we jumped to 88. And by Sunday, we're at 100. I have so enjoyed this cooler weather through May because normally it's, it's, it's already hot very hot. <laughs> Today I wanted to take you through our backyard and show you how we built or grew our garden I should say on a budget. Probably 60-40 of our plants were either purchased on clearance or I divided like our agapanthus, the Peter Pan plants, uh, our iris, um, oh I know there's something else that we divided and when, I, when it comes to me, I'll remember, <laughs> I'll make sure I tell you guys. If I can't list all the clearance plants on the screen, I will make sure that they're in the description versus what we purchased full price. And I thought we'd start right here by the garden shed. And I won't include the window boxes uh, since uh, those are mostly always, uh, I, it's hard to find annuals on clearance unless it's near the end of the season. And I think I posted a photo of this on Instagram the other day of the window box. That is Nemesia Violas, Creeping Jenny, and somewhere in there could be an English Daisy. Um, I would say Nemesia is, likes its spot right here. It gets mostly shade, a little bit of afternoon sun. And uh, that's probably one of the most beautiful window boxes I've ever had. And I'm trying to hang on to it for as, for as long as I can before it gets too hot. Next to that is our lemon cypress that we bought probably was 10, 12 inches at Christmas. Paid full price for that. Every geranium that you will see in our backyard garden, we picked up on clearance. Most of the plants that we've purchased on clearance range from $1 to about $8, depending upon the size. Uh, of their of the can that they're in throughout the tour you will see some dianthus plants that don't look as healthy as others and I'll let you know why near the end mostly because we've had to transplant them we have some geraniums near the other side of our garden that kind of grew so big they smothered them the rock and fuchsia salvia from Proven Winners. Meyer lemon tree, we've had that for a few years. I paid full price for that. All the lantana that you'll see scattered, it's not in bloom yet. It's not, it's, it's not hot enough. They, they, they like it very, very warm and will not start blooming until it gets hot. We purchased all those on clearance. The black lace elderberry, I have had this probably three years, I think three years. And this is the first time it's looked this healthy and bloomed this much. I love it. I wish I could get my hands on lemony lace here in town, uh, but technically I don't think this is our zone. I'll have to look it up. There are two or three plants there combined. The Euonymus I got on clearance. Throughout our garden, you'll notice little border garden fences that we have strategically placed. I don't particularly want them there. However, I need them there because our shepherd chief, he likes to cut the corner uh, when he sees a squirrel or a possum or a bird. And I'm in the hopes of saving some of my plants, I've kind of put them in a few spots so he doesn't trample over them. When we first built the pathway here, he did not want to use it. He didn't want to step on it, but now he's grown accustomed to it and he definitely understands that this is his pathway and he uses it all the time. On both sides of our hydrangeas, we have white iris. All these I brought back from the front garden and we divided them and they're doing very well, very, very healthy. And of course, they're always the very first thing to bloom in our garden. I'm not ready to do quite a hydrangea tour, but you will see one has died and actually two have died. There's one over here next to the two full ones that my mother 
gifted me and that was to replace one that died over here so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this area right here because I want them all to be full the same size and I believe the reason why these hydrangeas could possibly be struggling is not so much their fault but my fault over by the Merit Supreme we ran drip behind the hydrangeas and in front of them and just a few weeks ago we actually added five gallon per hour emitters to each hydrangea just to give it that much more water. Once summer hits its, its hottest part, it'll be 105, 110, sometimes 115. So they really do need all that water. Before it gets too hot, we will run a second line in front of these and, and add an extra five gallon an hour um, emitter. And hopefully that will help. The hydrangeas you see dotted that are in bloom behind, those I just picked up the other day. I think I got them, I don't know, $3, a dollar. I'm not sure if I'll be able to put them in my garden, but if I can't, I'll make sure I can get them into my mom's garden. This is the second Avondale red bud that we purchased. We planted the smaller one in our front yard uh, just a few days ago, and this is the larger one, and we'll be getting that in the ground at my mom's garden probably over the weekend. So I think she'll be happy about that. And since we've purchased it, I can't tell you how much growth it's put on just in the last few weeks. This Nandina over here, I think I said in one of our tours, was in a different part of our garden. We didn't realize for years that they had buried the pot in the ground. And we always wondered why it never grew. <laughs> We were retooling a flower bed over here, dug it up, and my husband said, they put the pot in the ground. So since it's been over here, it has pushed so much growth, and I think it likes being over here than it did over there. I especially probably is happy to be out of the pot. Then I have another one on the other side that I mirrored the other part of the gate with. These calla lilies back here in the back used to be where our Merit Supreme hydrangeas are now and I put half of them here and half of them in a different flower bed and they have been flowering for the last month. This whole area is protected by the afternoon sun by this privet that I am thinking was supposed to be a bush but I believe because when we came here it was already in tree form. I think the previous owners trimmed it up to be a tree. My husband and I have discussed taking this out and putting in its place a red Japanese maple. So we'll see about that, but I can't take it out right now because it's protecting the hydrangeas. This area right here in front of the fence, kind of a, a bit of a guiding point for our dog, for him to have a run behind all our plants. We did a tour last year I think it was like our first backyard tour and we had just planted a lot of these plants and we've had to move I believe either six or eight dianthus because all the geraniums that you'll see that kind of lined the border here grew so much they were I would say suffocating the dianthus. <laughs> So I am hoping that they they probably won't look good this season, but I'm going to give them until next spring and see if they come back. Because um, a lot of them look like they've, you know, been laid on and, you know, have they have a little bit of yellow in them. But look at all the dianthus that I picked up. These are, I believe, Paint the Town Magenta or Fuchsia. I'll, I'll make sure I have the correct name. I picked all these up for a dollar each, I think, from Proven Winners, and I think they're beautiful. Along that, you'll see the Salvia Lucantha, that this one is a bit of a monster. I don't know if you can divide those. Um, this, this is a plant that I, I could probably part with, but my husband seems to like them, so we have kept the ones that our German Shepherd um, hasn't destroyed. We've kept them in the ground and looks like they're gonna get ready to, they bloom twice a year. 
They're getting ready to bloom probably here pretty soon and then they'll bloom again during the fall. These two shrub roses is an heirloom rose um, perfume, perfume breeze pink. Uh, it's my first time having a shrub rose and their first flush looked almost white, but you can tell they're beginning to look pink and learning how to trim them and feed them through the gate. And hopefully someday this whole thing will be covered with pink roses. This potato vine, I believe we bought a year ago and it struggled. I think we got it in the spring, got hot, <laughs> stayed hot, <laughs> but doesn't it look magnificent? I just, I think it's a great addition and it just continually flowers. It'll probably slow down once the heat comes. Then here in the corner, my husband put like a, a ranch fencing against the fence here so the plumbago could climb up it. Our dog likes to jump on this fence if he sees a squirrel. And then of course he likes to look through the little cracks and stare at the dogs on the other side. But it was mostly so he wouldn't chase the squirrels and the possums. And normally we have this back area fenced off a little bit to protect the creeping fig because I've shown in past videos where down here at the bottom of the creeping fig, it's almost all dead. And that's because he marks it. But because we've had this sectioned off, look how green and beautiful it is at the base. And then our Oklahoma red bud. Look how full it is. It's only been in the ground, what, a year and a half? Is that how long we've had it? And I absolutely love it. It's, it's actually one of the most beautiful things during spring to have coffee or, you know, our dining room is just catty corner from this. And to see all those pink blooms all throughout spring is just absolutely beautiful. These are the second set of calla lilies that I transferred or transplanted, I should say rather. Then of course these hydrangeas, some of them are begin to bud up, but only just a few of them. This area where the Merit Supreme hydrangeas are is one of the most areas that I've, I'm proud of because I think all but one hydrangea I bought on clearance. And the lamium and the begonias I paid full price, but I just planted these, oh, not very long ago, and look how nicely they're filling in. I, uh, we did a video a while back of mulching, and soon I'll be doing a video of all of them in bloom. Slowly but surely, they're all beginning to bud up, and I think this is just going to be a beautiful wall of huge pink hydrangea blooms and I'm so excited to show you guys. They're all healthy. In fact, if you want to come around, these are the hydrangeas I picked up at Sam's Club that I planted in here. I couldn't find a bigger plant in the nursery, but I think they're doing really well. I don't, I don't think they're going to bloom this year. Maybe they will, but at least I haven't killed them. <laughs> I'll make sure to insert photos of what our place looked like just before we started our channel and almost everything is bare. I think there's a few Peter Pan plants back here. And just within a few short years, it's almost all full, hardly any dirt showing, except for of course the pathways where my dog runs. I just wanna encourage you to start in the clearance department. Lowe's probably has your best clearance plants more so than the orange store. But your local nurseries will also have a clearance section as well. And don't be afraid to ask where they're at. And if they look healthy enough to, to bring them home, give it a shot. You'll never know unless you try. And I've done that with so many of these. And so if you land up losing it, it's, it's, it's not like it's a lot of money that you've lost once the plant dies. But I'm really proud of 
what we've been able to build back here in such a short amount of time and uh, still many changes I'd like to make, different plants I'd like to move and, and try and we'll just we'll, we'll do that as the season progresses and the budget allows. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and we'll see you soon. Bye.